Hello, I'm Darren Llewellyn. Welcome to another episode of My Toolbox TV. Today, we're going to talk about motor starter heater sizing. Very important thing that you need to know if you're dealing with motors out in an industrial environment. Let's take a look. Motor starter heater sizing is really important. And if you haven't already watched an earlier episode of My Toolbox TV, we talked about the basics of a motor starter. And if you haven't watched it already, after watching this, you ought to go back and uh, take a look at that. Motor starter heaters have to be sized per the application. When you buy a motor starter, it doesn't automatically come with heaters. You have to tell the people what you want, and they'll provide you with the heaters. Motor starters come in a couple varieties of heaters. One is bimetallic, which kind of looks like a heater on your toaster. Uh, the other type is uh, a melting alloy type. It uses a eutectic solder. Now, when you size these for the application, if you do it improperly or maybe somebody's already sized your heaters or somebody swapped them out for some that weren't the right size, you'll have uh, issues like uh, motors uh, tripping out for no reason, uh, a lot of nuisance trips. Uh, you'll have motors that burn up and you'll think, well, why does this motor keep burning up? And oftentimes it's simply because the heaters aren't sized properly. Motor starter heaters protect a three-phase motor, and they have to be sized per the motor nameplate current. Now, fuses and circuit breakers also protect motors and other parts of the circuit, but fuses and circuit breakers protect for really high currents. Uh, motor starters protect for currents up to 600% of the motor full load current. Now, what that means is that when a, when a motor is running, and it draws, say, 200, 300% of full load current. If that was to continue, or maybe 400 or 500%, the motor would burn up if it weren't for the motor starter. The fuses and circuit breakers would never know there was a problem with the motor until after the motor burned up and melted and shorted out, then the fuses and circuit breakers trip. So what we've got to have for the motor is protection for those currents that are high, but not very high that are high enough to burn up the motor, but not trip out a breaker or a fuse. Now, these currents are, like I said, up to about 600% of the, the motor current. And that's also what a motor pulls generally when you start it. Motors have a current curve. When you start them running from zero up to about 600%, it's called locked rotor current. Well, if that's going to happen, you can't have your heaters trip, and they won't because they're slow. Heaters come in three different classes. One of the classes is class 10. What that means is that a heater will take 10 seconds to trip the motor at 600% of the full load current of the motor. A class 20 takes 20 seconds. A class 30 takes 30 seconds. Generally, ap general applications, a class 20 is what is, is generally, is what is usually used. A safety note about motors tripping out is that operators, people that are not qualified to be in a control panel, aren't qualified to open the door and be exposed to these electrical hazards, should not be trained and shown where this little white reset button is. The, the problem you get into is an operator's running a machine out in the plant, it keeps tripping, they have watched the maintenance people reset this thing and they constantly go over there and reset it themselves. Obviously, that's a safety problem. OSHA is very clear that uh, unqualified operations folks are not allowed in these electrical panels. So they're very clear on that. Um, so they would have to be, whoever's in there would have to be trained to do this task and to do it safely, uh, which is generally pretty hard to do if you're not already a qualified person. Um, another problem that operations folks can sometimes cause is continuously uh, over a period of time, resetting the motor starter every time it trips. Uh, give you an example, I used to work in a plastics plant, and there was a high-speed vacuum system that moved pellets around the building, and there was a filter, an air filter. And operations folks didn't always want to clean this filter as often it needed cleaned, and that would draw more current on the motor. The more, more the dirtier that filter got, the more current the, the thing drew. Well, it would trip the motor. They'd reset it. 
instead of cleaning the filter. Then they'd keep doing that during the day. The motor's getting hotter and hotter and hotter through this whole process, and eventually they burn up the motor. Um, if a motor starter trips once, fine, have a maintenance person reset it. If it trips again in a very short time, something needs done, we need to look at what this problem is. Um, make sure that uh, you know, there's not a load on a conveyor belt or a bad bearing on the motor or some of the, the mechanical parts it's driving or an internal problem with the motor. How do you size a heater? Well, the, the best information and the place I can tell you that you need to go so you fully understand all the details is something like this, which you can find all over the internet. Uh, they come, these instructions from the manufacturer come in the box when you buy the motor starter, uh, you can find all this information that's available. If you're using an Allen Bradley like this one or Square D or Cutler Hammer, whatever you're using, make sure you familiarize yourself with their instructions. They're always different. Uh, they're, uh, you, you read the Square D instructions next to Allen Bradley instructions and they're not the same. We'll go through an exercise in a little bit and we'll look at Allen Bradley. Now if you're purchasing a brand new motor starter, you get all these instructions and it may, you may also get some help from the electrical distributor where you purchased uh, the starter. Uh, that's for new applications. Uh, well, oftentimes engineers, electrical engineers are putting in the new stuff. But oftentimes in a factory you're dealing with something that's been in there for 10 or 20 years and has been worked on by lots of people and you're going to have to start from scratch. You must start with the, the part number of the motor starter. Make sure you're looking at the right bulletin number for a square D or what have you. And you're looking at the proper instructions, the proper size. Motor starters come in NEMA sizes. And uh, make sure you've got the proper instructions for that particular motor starter you're using. When you go to size a motor starter, you're going to be faced with a chart from the manufacturer. In this chart, this one for instance, the different columns are for different sizes of motor starters. So find the starter that you're, you use. These numbers in these columns are the nameplate current from the motor nameplate. And as you zoom in on this part of the chart right here, make it more simple, let's say that this is your motor starter and your motor nameplate current says uh, 15. If your current's 15 amps, for this particular situation, that would be a W56, which is an Allen Bradley motor starter part number, heater element number, they call it. One last thing I'd like to say about motor uh, starter heater sizing is that some types of motor starters, those with, for instance, bimetallic type heaters, the ones that look like the toaster heater, um, have some adjustment on it sometime where you can kind of tweak the, the current level up and down. Um, also, IEC type motor stars, European type, have adjustments and what have you. Be careful with those. Those need adjusted the same way that we just went through the exercises on, on the ones that can't be adjusted. Oftentimes, too many times in a factory, a motor trips out and the maintenance person sees a knob that says high or low, they're, they're going to go to high on it and so the thing doesn't trip anymore. And yeah, you're right, but your motor might start burning up. So, you have motors burning up that don't look like they ought to be burning up, look at those sorts of things. Well, I hope you got something out of today. I sure hope you did. That was our goal. Um, if you have any more questions, feel free to, to drop us an email if any questions you have. We love your questions. And I'd like to thank you again for uh, visiting us for this episode of My Toolbox TV. Until next time.